So this is the second problem on manometry. For the configuration as shown in the figure, you are tasked to find for the value of the specific weight of the unknown fluid. Now you are also explicitly tasked to express your answer in pounds per cubic feet. Now as you can see here, um, you have to recall the fact that your specific weight, in this case UF stands for unknown fluid, that is just equal to the weight per given volume of the fluid. So in a sense, this talks about the heaviness of a fluid per given volume. And also that is just equal to the density of the unknown fluid or whatever fluid that is multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. Now, I am expressing this first in the video because this will be one of the most uh, central equation that we'll be using in this solution. Okay. <clears throat> Another thing that you need to note of this problem is that if I call this my point A and call this my point B, they are actually open to the atmosphere. Therefore, what the pressure at these points of the interface which is exposed to the atmosphere is just equal to the pressure at B, which are all one atmosphere. Since they are, as I've said, open to the atmosphere. So the pressure brought about or the force brought about by these two pressures actually set that this fluid be in this stable configuration. So there is no net movement anymore of that fluid after the influence of the force brought about by these two pressures over here since that is the case of fluid statics. And that is our problem. That is basically the concept behind our problem. So... I'm just going to erase these things here. Okay, this is my point B. And another thing that you should, you should note is basically to solve this problem, you need to understand that whenever we go down in our fluid, the pressure generally increases. So we add plus P. And whenever we go up across our fluid column, the pressure decreases. So we add negative P. And that will also form the central idea in terms of how we solve this problem. Now, the first thing that you should do in this problem is to actually try to understand that some of the fluid elements that you are going to consider are just this one. So if that is simply the fluid element, you need to take the height of that fluid element over there. And also, I am hoping by this example, you are able to understand that there is a trick towards solving this problem by simply finding the fluid level of this one over here so i will make another point over here and you will understand later why i did that okay so now i'm going to assign values for 5.5 inch i will call that h1 and this 1.4 inches that is one uh, h2 and this 3.3 .3 inches i will assign that to be my h3 and for my um, 4.9 inch, I will assign that as my H sub 4. Okay, so that means to say that for this fluid element, which I have uh, written with an arrow in blue, the height of that column is just, let me just zoom in a little bit, that is just H1 minus H2. Okay, I'm hoping that is clear. So for the second height, you need to take note that later, this, this is just the height of the fluid that you will consider. Wait, I'm just going, yeah, this one. This height over here could be solved by just taking H3, which is 3.3 .3 inches, minus the height from the bottom. Because 3.3 .3 is this one, and 1 1.4 is this one. So the difference of that two will be the height from this one to this one. And that is just in notation H3 minus H2. Okay, so let's proceed now to the top portion. So from the top up until the bottom here, that is H4 or 4.9 4 inch. So basically, if we are just considering, sorry, it's H3 minus H2. We are just considering this fluid level or the height of your fluid in that, uh, that height over there. You could just express that as H4 minus H3. Okay, and that will prove um, essential in terms of how we solve our problem later. So we are now ready to 
uh, add up all the pressures that led to the static case of our fluid. So firstly, we start either way. You start at either point A or point B. It won't matter. So for me, I prefer to start at point A. So when I start at point A, what will happen is that I will add PA. And take note that you are going down from point A up until here. And that is you are moving across water. So since you are moving down, you add a pressure. The pressure increases as you go down, remember? So you add rho, but the density of that fluid, that is that fluid is water, multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. And the height of that is just h1 minus h2. So I am hoping it made sense now why we tried to solve for the heights first. Now, secondly, you might think, again, I have already mentioned this from my other video, so you may check that out. You could actually add pressure as you go down here. That is, let's say that's plus P. But you need to take note that from that point, from the bottom towards this same water level, you also add minus P. So basically, the pressure that you added up to the system will just be de cancelled out by the pressure as you move up. On that same system on that same fluid also so that means to say that i will no longer concern myself with the pressures across here so the most practical thing and i have mentioned this in my other vi video that the most practical thing to do as long as you are moving across the same fluid is to jump to its level fluid level in this case the dot that i am making here so from that i will try to measure the pressure as i go up from that up until here and that is all the unknown fluid i'm moving across the unknown fluid so i will just add but take note i will have a negative density of the unknown fluid it is because of the fact that my density decreases as i go up hence the negative and that height is just h3 minus h2 so i have h3 minus h2 so from that point i will now be moving take note of the red from that uh, boundary up until the surface of your water and i am now moving across water so i will add up but i will take a negative of the pressure since the pressure decreases as i go up so negative of the density of water g and the height is just h4 minus h3 now from that point i also noted that that is equal to minus p sub b where p sub b is the atmospheric pressure since we have another pressure here brought about by the atmospheric pressure now take consideration or try to look into these terms here pa and pb as i've said in the in the very first section of this video are actually just equal to one atmosphere since these are open to the atmospheric pressure pa being positive and pb being negative so eventually they will just cancel out each other so in the very first e lines of equation i will just simplify it by canceling that out now another thing that you should note is that the specific weight is given by this expression density times the acceleration due to gravity so in a sense this term sorry this term and these terms are all or can be expressed in terms of specific weight and that is exactly what we are doing here so this is the specific weight of water multiplied by h1 minus h2 and then this one over here will be the negative of the sorry negative of the specific weight of the unknown fluid uf multiplied by h3 minus h2 and then this one also will become negative of the specific weight of water multiplied by h4 minus h3 Okay, so <clears throat> if you notice here that this one is negative and this contains the term that we are looking for, particularly the u sub f or the specific weight of the unknown fluid, I will transpose it to the other side of my equation so that it will become positive. So what will be left is just the specific weight of water, h1 minus h2 minus the specific weight of water multiplied by h4 minus h3. And the other side of the equation will have positive specific weight of the unknown fluid, H3 minus H2. Now, I'm just going to simplify this further. 
So I will factor out this specific weight of water since it's a common term. And I have H1 minus H2 minus the H4 minus H3. Now I am stressing, as you can see, the proper use of the grouping symbol because sometimes you get uh, a wrong answer just because you did not take into consideration proper usage of the grouping symbols. And I'm talking about this one. Okay. Because as you can see here, I'm just going to erase that one. As you can see here, this will become the specific weight of water. And that will be H1 minus H2. And this one will be distributed. That sign there, the negative sign will be negative H4. When you try to distribute that, that will become positive H3. So that's what I'm talking about of the proper usage of the grouping symbol. So H3 minus H2. So from that, it is very apparent sa inyo, uh, that you, just, you should just divide both sides of the equation by the term H3 minus H2 so that you will have uh, the specific weight of the unknown fluid alone on the second or in the right side of the equation. So when you do that, uh, you are seeing that that will cancel out, leaving you with the desired variable which is the unknown fluid specific weight so one thing that you should note also is the specific weight of water this is given to be equal to 62.4 pounds per cubic foot so you just have to substitute the values here so from that you have uh, 62.4 pounds per cubic foot and then you multiply that by H1. H1 from the problem, when you go back there, it's 5.5 inch. So that is 5.5 inches minus H2 is 1.4 inch. I guess I just have to move this one a little bit. Okay, 1.4 inch minus H4 in the problem is 4.9 inch. And you add H3. In the problem, H3 is just 3.3 .3 inches. 3.3 .3 inches. And everything will be divided by uh, H3 minus H2. So H3 again is 3.3 .3 inch minus H2. H2 is just 1.4 inches. So when you try to um, simplify, 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. The numerator term, when you add up everything, 5.5 minus 1.4 minus 4.9 plus 3.3, .3, that will just be all equal to 2.5 inches. And the denominator, if you subtract that one, will just be 1.9 inches. Now this is looking good because inches will cancel out, leaving behind all the pounds per square foot. I mean, pounds per cubic foot. So this is just the specific weight of the unknown fluid. So when you try to calculate that one, that will give you approximately that the specific weight of the unknown fluid is approximately equal to 82.11 pounds per cubic foot. So that is your specific weight of the unknown fluid.